You got a favorite in this match? Uh, this is going to be kind of interesting. This is the newer Scape Shift list, list that we've seen. Mm -hmm. It's more of a turbo all-in. It has a little more mana ramp, and then it's playing Hour of Promise, which can go and search up the Valakids, which is huge. We saw Collins Mullen with this list last week in Syracuse. Uh, got off to a really good start, did Collins. Did not end up making the elimination rounds. We did a deck tech with him as well, so if you do check out that previous coverage in Syracuse from last weekend, you can find out more about the list. This one looks very, very similar. There are just a couple main deck copies of Engineered Explosives where Collins last weekend had no interaction yeah. in his main deck, none whatsoever. So Brian's just got a little bit of interaction in EE. For B, BD, he's going to start things off with an Inquisition of Kozlek after surging up Watery Grave. So we'll take a look at Brian's hand, and you will find a Search for Tomorrow, a Scape Shift. You've got a Sakura Tribelder, a Mountain, another copy of Cinderglade there as well. The problem was is that his first land entered the battlefield tab, so he was not able to suspend Search on turn one. Yeah, Search is definitely the best ramp card in this deck. I you can get so. it going on turn one, but uh, if you can't cast it, it's not helping you out. Or suspend it, as you will. Brian's going to be able to take a non scape shift card here. Now, one of the things that's nice about this take on scape shift is that things are just very redundant with scape shift. You know, the deck has a million ramp spells. It's got primeval titans, way to find primeval titans there in Summoner's Pack. And it's just going to try to do the same thing every game and do it as fast as possible. Yeah, like you said, almost no interaction in the main deck. Uh, it has some, some sideboard cards that it can bring in, but the main deck is all about kind of fish bowling, just getting to Valakid as fast as possible and winning that way. So Brian taking a long look. He obviously knows what he's up against now. And there goes, I believe, a copy of Explore. It's a different uh, different artwork on Explore. Never seen that one before. Yeah, they're always throwing curveballs at us with the art. You've got to be ready. I can read the text from here-ish. <laughs> the second line says draw a card, so I know that's Explore. For Brian, he might be thinking Tribelder, might be thinking Suspend Search. He'll play Cinderglade. He will Suspend Search tomorrow. Two Suspend Counters on that ramp spell. And then we're going to go back over to BBD, who's at 17, and he's going to keep trying to work that life total down. If you are wondering, for Brian Lowe, because there are two Brians in this matchup, for Brian Lowe, your scapeshift player, he does have only three copies of Prismatic Omen this weekend, or we saw Collins with four last weekend. I like the sequencing that Brian Lowe took here. The, the suspension makes sense. The Sakura Tribe Elder, he potentially would want to sacrifice right away to get another land into play. But by doing this, he, he gets his Suspend spell online, and then later he might be able to trump block with the Sakura Tribe Elder before he cashes it in for that land. We're going to go back over to Brian Lowe for his third turn of the game. Search for Tomorrow is going to come down to one counter. And we know about the mountain, but he's drawn another mountain, so he'll play one of them. And here is Tribe Elder. And might have another suspend. We do. So you can see the redundant nature of this deck. Yeah, oh yeah. Ramping is very easy to do. Getting the six or primeval titans very easy to do. Or, and getting to seven plus lands for scape shift, not very hard to do either. Yeah, and it's this redundancy that that is part of the power of the deck. I mean, if you try to pick it apart with discard spells, you're not going to be doing a very good job. No, not at all. And BBD with a slow plotting start here. He really needs to get something online if he's going to fight back against the scape shift strategy. One of the problems with the Death Shadow deck is that it deals itself so much damage that when a Valakate comes into play, you only need a couple of lands to finish off the opponent. Yeah, when you're playing against Death Shadow with Scape Shift, you are a seven land Scape Shift. You're yep. not an eight land one. It's very easy to just have this have seven land Scape Shift, you Valakate plus six mountains. You're definitely dead. Well, even outside of Scape Shift, it can just be draw and play a Valakate, start, start ramping into a few more spells, finish off the opponent. Absolutely. If there are nine, you only need three lands after that. Yeah, that's not that, I mean, that's pretty common for them to be that low. That's why you see decks go after Death Shadow with kind of dealing them damage. That's why you see a lot of people like playing Burn. This, the, you know, Scape Shift, instead of having to assemble eight lands, you only have to assemble seven, or as you mentioned, you can just kind of do it au naturel, yeah. which is finding some Valakut, stuff like that, and be okay. Brian in a sacrifice is called Tarn here. Get himself a steam vent. So all the colors are online. Oftentimes when you watch a Death Shadow player, they're going to have two watery graves and then it's a red source for Brian's got a blood crypt, a steam vent, and a watery grave. So colors are not going to be an issue for your reigning and defending world champion as he's going to delve into play a Gurmag Angler and pass the turn back over to Brian Lowe. Search for tomorrow is going to resolve. Yeah, that Angler was important for a couple of reasons. 
Obviously, he needs the pressure to, to kill Brian Lowe as fast as possible, but also it'll turn on uh, any of his counter spells. Mm -hmm. Stubborn and Isle, the ones Craig's talking about there. And Brian has, let's see how many main deck copies here this week, and assuming he, uh-oh. Have we shown up without Stubborn and Isles? Hmm. Three in the board. Three in the board, none in the main here for BBD. That's a bit of a surprise. Very used to seeing that card in the main deck. Brian's got a lot more manipulation in his main deck this weekend, though. Yep. Four Thought Scours, four Sleight of Hands, and three Serum Visions in his main deck, and a couple copies of Liliana the Veil. So that's why you don't find any main deck copies of Stubborn Denial, as Brian Lowe will play another copy of Secure Tribelder. And he'll simply pass the turn back. We're going to go over to BBD, who will draw a card. Picked up a copy of Polluted Delta. Now, this will be a little bit fascinating because you do wonder if Brian Lowe is going to try to play around Stubborn Denial. Yeah, the, the card has become so ubiquitous in a lot of these Death Shadow decks that opponents will play around it even if it's not in your deck. Mm -hmm. See if that's going to change things in this particular game as we, just like you at home, are working with the information that BBD does not have those in his main deck this weekend. There's a fatal push. Brian Lowe will sacrifice the secure Tribelder, and now he's going to dig out another land, see if it'll be a forest or a mountain here for your scapeshift player. And he's going to go with the forest. He, of course, wants to make sure he leaves enough mountains in his deck for scapeshift. Otherwise, things would be a little awkward. Yeah, you need the right amount of density there. He is in a position where, after the search for tomorrow resolves, he'll be able to go for it if he wants to. Mm -hmm. BBD is going to come across here for five with the Angler. Lowe's going to fall down to 15. The follow-up here for BBD is a Death Shadow. Fatty. Ah, uh, yes, just a 1-1 one -one <laughs> at the moment, but that could change, as we have learned so many times watching Grix's Death Shadow. Lowe will resolve his search for tomorrow. Again, we'll see what land Brian wants to search up here. He's going to go with the Basic Forest once again. He'll shuffle, present over to BBD, and again, we know he's got Scape Shift in hand. And we know that BBD doesn't have Stubborn Now in his deck, so he's got uh, clear for takeoff. Indeed. The, the question is, will he go for it? That's the question. He'll draw a card. All right, Brian Lowe, wings up. BBD trying to represent some strength here. No time like the present. I think Brian Lowe might be going through that thought process of, I've got to try to win. Don't know if I want to wait. If I get thought seized, it's going to be horrible news. Yeah, if he doesn't scape shift here, he has to have, have a plan where he doesn't scape shift for the rest of the game. Yeah. Because it only gets worse for him. Yep. You give your opponent more draw steps to find a stubborn denial or a thought seize, something like that. You see, he's holding it. He's going to play Valakut. And it looks like he is going to go for it here with scape shift. So he's going to sacrifice, it looks like, seven lands. He will. And he's going to leave Valakut on the battlefield. So Brian Lowe's going to get to search up seven lands. Presumably it'll be seven mountains, but he's going to get a Valakut. And now here come the stomping grounds, of course, which, which are mountains. There's a normal mountain. That's four of the seven. There's five. Six is another mountain. One more, Mr. Lowe. Come on, mountain. <laughs> Do not get a forest. <laughs> Cinderglade will work just fine because it is a mountain. We got some shots going up to BBD's head. 12 of them to be precise. Goodbye, Gurmag Angler. <laughs> 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 and that is going to do goodbye, Gurmag Angler. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Brian Lowe is going to win game number one here over Brian Braun doing scape shift very quickly up a game here over Grixis Death Shadow. And now as you take a look at the main deck builds here between these two players, you know, it kind of makes some sense here that Brian Lowe would actually have a good game one matchup because he doesn't have to worry about Stubborn Denial at all. Well, yeah, l like we said, he doesn't know that, but it certainly is much easier when you just don't have to worry about that card. Yeah. Uh, he, he came to the conclusion that he had to go for it then, which was the right conclusion. Played a spell, won the game. Pretty good feeling. Yeah. To get your day started against the defending world champion. We'll go to the sideboards here. We're going to start with BBD, who's got three Ceremonious Rejection, three Nile Spell Bomb, three Stubborn Denial, two Collective Brutality, two Coast Lex Return to Terminate, and a Colongon's Command. Well, Stubborn Denial's the easy one. Yeah. I think the, we're going to see that come in, but what else do you like? Stubborn Denial's super easy here. There's a question is if he has enough mediocre cards that he wants to cut from his deck, we might see some of these other cards that terminate, maybe the Colongon's Command, maybe even just Nile Spell Bomb as a cycling card. Uh, 
in against the opponent. The thing is, he, he has you know, all these fatal bushes, he has some dismembers. There's cards that he definitely wants to get out of his main deck. Yeah, plenty of bad cards that BBD can get out of his deck and bring into his deck. So we take a look at Brian Lowe and his sideboard. Three Anger of the Gods, two Nature's Claim, two Ancient Grudge, two Relic Regenerators, two Obstinate Bailoth, a Chameleon Colossus, a Beast Within, a Grafter's Cage, and a Reclamation Sage. Yeah, the question for Brian Lowe here is what what particular build does he think BBD is on? Mm -hmm. Because the option in Bailoth can just be backbreaking if your opponent tries to uptake Liliana. Very true, even, even though he didn't see Liliana. He didn't, yes. uh, yeah, th that's why it's a question of what build he puts BBD on. Sure. Um, so that card can potentially come in. I like Relic of Progenesis a lot against all of the, the Death Shadow variants, so I can definitely see that card coming in. And then there's a question of if he wants you know, this flexible removal, like the one beast within may come in uh, because he's not sure what to expect. Give me that Chameleon Colossus. Yeah, the Chameleon Colossus can just go beat downs. Yeah, pro black, that's pro tasker, pro death shadow, pro uh, pro fatal push if BBD leaves any copies in. Uh, BBD checking to see if you got Lightning Bolt here this week and he just has one pro Lightning Bolt. So uh, Chameleon Colossus, just a one of, little fun of, but we might see that come in here for Brian Lowe as well. Players, it look like they're just about done sideboarding. We're going to start shuffling. So we're going to start off our weekend by talking about the StarCityGames.com weekly sale, where until Monday, you get to get up to 50% off of select standard staples. That means Gideon Ally, Zendikar, the Scorpion God, Heart of Kieran, and so much more. Go.StarCityGames.com slash weekly sale. does end on Monday at 10.59 a.m., but we'll have a brand new one up for you at 11 a.m. on Monday. Go.StarCityGames.com slash weekly sale. Craig. You looking for some standard staples? Is there anything you need to uh, fill out? Maybe your black green deck? It, it's funny that you should say that because I did actually this week fill out my play set of walking blisters. Boom. Bang. There you go. Customer. That's very, very good. That's very nice of you. Yeah, I, I had two and I was borrowing two from one of my buddies and I was just like, this card's really good. It's going to be it's good a, for a long time. It's a fairly good magic card, yes. It's good in many formats. Yeah. Let me just get a couple more of these. Uh, we take a moment here to learn a little bit more about BBD, your, uh, your reigning world champion, who's had a lot of success, of course, on the SCG Tour, has a 31-year-old from Roanoke, Virginia, with 14 open top eights, one open win, four invitational top eights as well. Uh, he was doing some computer science before he made the transition over to Magic, high school valedictorian, learned to play Magic in college, big fan of chess as well. And as I mentioned, he is your reigning and defending Magic the Gathering world champion, is Brian Rondoon, though he is currently down a game to get his weekend started here in Richmond. So we'll see if he can tie things up with Grix's Death Shadow. Looks like he's going to take a mulligan here while Brian Lowe taking a look at his seven cards. I'm, I'm always impressed by the school valedictorian, you know, accomplishments that people have. Like, it's just, you have to work harder than everyone else in your high school. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I was not a big fan of working really hard. I worked on deck lists in yeah. high school. That's what I did. Sure, yeah. Had the notebook out. What, what was your deck list grade? I give it an A. <laughs> I, I give it an A. Easy, easy A. Easy A. Because I had, it's not so much about the quality, it's more about the quantity. Sure. I was writing them down for days. <laughs> one of them had to be good. <laughs> they can't all be bad. There's got to be at least one winner in that notebook. Sure. I was taking notes in class, in quotes. What I was really doing was trying to figure out like how many browbeats I should be playing in my bad red green decks. Yeah. That's right. How many of the zero browbeats should you be playing? That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. How dare you? Oh, that was a classic trap card. How dare you talk about browbeats like that? Classic trap card. I remember when that bad boy came out. Everyone was excited. I was pumped. I was pumped. Looked so good. And then not that good. Kind of disappointing. Brian taking a look at six cards here. And it looks like he's happy, happy. Bloodstained Myers, where we're going to begin things. We'll go over to Brian Lowe. He's going to search himself up a watery grave while Brian Lowe just started things off with a Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle. My assumption is that Brian Lowe probably has some green mana in his hand, but we'll find out soon enough. Yeah, it's probably a pretty safe assumption. Uh, some people are reluctant to play Valakit onto the board pretty early. The it, It's an outside case, but occasionally your Valakit gets 
blown up with something, mm -hmm. and then surgical extraction. It can happen. It can happen. Not a ton, but like you said, it is an outside case. It does. It does happen occasionally. You got a serum visions here for BBD. Now the card you drew off serum visions. It was a copy of Stubborn Denial. An important one is he's going to split the difference on the scry. One on top, one on bottom. And now Street Wraith will cycle. So Brian will draw that card that he kept on top right away. He'll play a land in an island and simply pass the turn back over to Brian Lowe, who will untap that Valakut and draw a card, a forest. What ramp spell do we have? All right, it's a slower ramp spell here in Connie Hart Expedition. Well, we, we, you call it slower, but really that thing could be online next turn. Well, unfortunately for Brian Lowe, it got countered by Stubborn Denial as BBD is going to keep moving forward here for his third turn of the game. Yeah, if Brian Lowe played a fetch land next turn, fetched up another land, and then had a ramp spell of any sort, you know, that, that expedition already has three counters on it. Well, you see the hand here for Brian Lowe. He's pushing that <laughs> obstinate bailout forward. Wants BBD <laughs> to select that one with the thought sees. Don't think that's going to happen, Mr. Lowe. But he will maybe select an Hour of Promise or a Primeval Titan. You see the rest of the hand here for Lowe. It's pretty slow with a windswept teeth and two copies of Stomping Ground. Yeah, definitely slow hand, but this hand has the redundancy that we were talking about, uh, where it's hard to just punch a hole in it with one discard spell. And BBD already used a very important counter spell early in the game. So, you, you know, he might not be able to deal with all of these threats. He, he might be on the plane, I got to get something big on the board next turn, maybe even this turn, and just put a clock on my opponent because I, I can't just let him ramp up to six mana and start casting Primeval Titans. Yeah, the assumption, of course, is by using the Stubborn Denial there on the Clowny Heart Expedition, you know, I, I think that probably has a Snapcaster Mage in his hand. Sure. Or assumes that he'll draw into one uh, because he does play four copies of the card, and, you know, this deck does get through itself pretty quickly, be able it, to find cards. Yeah, you, you had mentioned he's playing four Sleight of Hands, four Thought Scours, three Serum Visions, and then the four Street Wraiths. So it, this deck has a lot of churn going on. Brian thinking long and hard about maybe taking Opson and Bailoff here with Thoughtseize. <laughs> maybe, that's, maybe that's what he's going to tank about. Hopefully he doesn't misclick here. Yeah, that would be bad. That would be bad. <laughs> the IRL misclicks. Yeah, never good. Never good. So it's between Titan and Hour. And he's giving this one, again, a lot of thought before he's going to select Primeval Titan finally. Brian, of course, taking two to do that. And now he'll just pass the turn back over to Brian Lowe. So Ryan Lowe's third turn of the game, he's just going to play a Stomping Ground tapped. Didn't draw a two-mana ramp spell, so he'll pass the turn back over to BBD. BBD will draw a card, knows that Obstin and Bailoff will be coming soon. As he plays a Serum Vision, he'll draw a card. Now he'll scry two. Sleight of Hand, Death Shadow looks like what he's looking at here. Maybe an Inquisition of Kozlak. Either way, they're both going to the bottom. Now he'll cycle a Street Wraith. Maybe BBD on the hunt for land number three, though it doesn't appear as though he's found it. So he'll play a Death Shadow. He'll pass the turn back over to Brian Lowe. Lowe will draw a card. Picked up a copy of Summoner's Pact, it appears. can go straight to our option to bail off if he'd like to. That's kind of the level one play, I guess. Not sure if he has much else to do, though. Yeah, I think that's just his best option because he doesn't have a lot else going on here. Um, they're obviously, he's drawing the Summoner's Pack. He just has to go through the iterations. Do I want to use the Summoner's Pack here, maybe get a Secure Tribe Elder? I'll be able to ramp one more. But then he's taking next turn when he would be at six mana for the Titan off. I, yeah. guess, I guess the Titan got discarded anyway. Well, he may have drawn another one at this Sh stage, sure. too. But he's just going to play opposite and bail off. Of course, the Stomping Ground's going to enter the battlefield untapped. He takes a little to gain a little, so he's up to 22 as we head back over to BBD, who I believe has at least one copy of Liliana of the Veil in hand, potentially two, but he's just missing that third mana. And if he could have hit that on time, obviously it would have had a huge change on this game. Yeah, BBD being all jammed up on mana is definitely a big deal here. Uh, like you said, it takes the Snapcaster Mage snubber, stubborn denial play off of the table. Um, he's not able to just cast all the cards that he wants each turn. And this Death Shadow is not very intimidating right now. Well, it might get a little bit more tough because there's a Pluto Delta finally for Brian. 
Death Shadow right now, 2-2. Two, two. It can become a 5-5. Five, five. Very, very quickly with just the sacrificing of a land. Now again, Brian has to be a little bit worried of Hour of Promise as here comes Death Shadow. Just a 2-2 two, two coming on in. All right. Brian Lowe says, I'm not blocking. I'm not, uh, not that foolish. Don't want to lose my ops in Baylor. <laughs> Plus, I got a little bit of life to work with. This BBD is going to sacrifice the Polluted Delta. Search of a Blood Crypt. Take three total damage, fall to eight. And then, as I mentioned, that Death Shadow now 5-5. Five, five. So Brian Lowe is going to fall down to 17. The follow-up is Liliana the Veil. Brian's going to tick down, take care of Ops and a Bailoth, and pass the turn back over to Brian Lowe. And that's not a great turn for BBD. Uh, getting the obstinate bell off, off the board isn't really a big deal. He, he's just tapped out, giving Brian the opportunity to play Hour of Promise, mm -hmm. just uncontested. Nothing to stop him. Yeah. Now, Brian Lowe's hand not great right now. Merely okay. He's got a lot of lands over there, the Hour, and it looks like he need to pick up another copy of Primeval Titan. But he's also got that Summoner's Pack in the hand. I think that's what's giving him some pause here. What do I want to do with this? Because he does have the ability, assuming that he did Cyborg and Chameleon Colossus, to search it up with Summoner's Pack and play it. Sure. That would be a little bit tempting. The only problem I have with that line is next turn he has to pay for the Pact, mm -hmm. which means he won't be able to just pump the Colossus and kill BBD. Yeah. I think I really like the Hour of Promise here. Uh, he already has a Valakit in play, so if he goes and gets two mountains, the next turn he resolves a Primeval Titan. It, it might just be enough to kill BBD. Yeah, because he's got three mountains right now. He plays Hour. So he can go get maybe another Valakit plus a mountain or, you know, kind of whatever he wants to do here. Yeah. If he makes a land drop next turn and plays a Titan, nine damage. Yep. So here you see Hour of Promise. If you play standard, you're familiar with it. And now, if you play Scapeshift Modern, you might become more familiar with this ramp spell. You can search your library for up to two land cards, put them onto the battlefield tap, then shelf your library. Then if you control three or more deserts, create two, two, two black zombie creature tokens. Not a lot of deserts when you need mountains. Yeah. Yeah, this deck does not play any deserts, doesn't care about that. Just cares about doing its thing here by searching up Valakuts and or Mountains. So there is a second Valakut and a Mountain. So right now what you're going to see is four Mountains, two Valakuts in the battlefield. So if Primetime resolves and gets two Mountains, that's four shots. Yep. That's 12 damage. And I like the second Valakut here. It gives him a little insurance uh, against a potential Fulminator Mage. Okay. Okay. It's actually pretty smart. Didn't think about that. We're going to go back over to Brian Brown doing now. It's the Brian Mir match. BBD's got that Liliana finally resolved. Brian Lowe, three cards in hand, Primeval Titans, Summoner's Pact, and a Windswept Heath. And for BBD, he says, he's thinking, I got to get this game over with in two turns. Yeah. That's got to be the thought process here is how can I do that? Well, and, and option B for BBD would be try to get all the cards out of his opponent's hand. Mm -hmm. He's going to start by Thought Scouring himself. Thought Seize, Thought Scour, go to the graveyard. Didn't get a great look at what he drew. You know, if BBD had started the turn with that Thought Seize in his hand, he could have upticked Lily, Thought Seized, played the other Lily if he had the mana for it, mm -hmm. upticked that one as well, and Brian would be left with no cards in his hand. But wasn't able to get that done this turn. And right now, as Liliana's going to take up, the one thing that BBD doesn't know are, is any of the cards in Brian Lowe's hand. Players will discard Kolagon's Command and Windswept Heath. We'll go to the graveyard. Here comes Death's Shadow for five. BBD has another copy of Death's Shadow and a Gurmag Angler, and that ain't going to do it, folks. That is not going to do it at all. He does build a nice army, which <laughs> means he would be attacking for lethal next turn. 
but he has no idea the cards right now in Brian Lowe's hand. Our Promise was the last one that he knew about from the earlier discard spell. Yep. And unfortunately for your reigning world champion, this will be his last turn of this particular game. As Brian Lowe's going to quickly untap, he will draw a card. He will tap six mana, play Primeval Titan, and it is time to search for mountains, my friends. One and two. Prime time. That's going to do it. Brian Lowe's going to win this match here over Brian Braun Dewan. Two games to zero. Scape Shift is going to take care of Grixis Death Shadow. And for Brian Lowe, you just beat a world champion, my friend. You are 1-0 here at SCG Richmond.